another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Gen Con. I'm Callie and I'm here with Az from Mythic Games. Hi Az. Hello Callie. Hi everybody. <laughs> How's it going here at Gen Con? It's absolutely incredible. This is like the biggest and best show we've ever been. It's like our third time here as a solo company. So the booth is looking awesome. We've been busy non-stop. We've got a bunch of different games on display, a bunch of different announcements that we're doing. So yeah, it's really, really good. The buzz is fantastic this year. It's good to see. I see you have a lot of traffic, a lot of demos going on. Really exciting to see what you have to share while you're here at Gen Con. What's up first? Oh man, okay, so we're gonna, yeah, be, be, here you go, hold on to your seats, it's information time, we're gonna rattle through some stuff, okay? So the big thing is we just finished the Kickstarter for Super Fantasy Brawl, so it finished like two weeks uh, just before Gen Con, and we've now got the late pledge open, it's got, so it's on gamefine.com, we're using those guys, we've got the whole game over there so people can still late pledge if they wanna jump on board, and Super Fantasy Brawl, you guys featured this, right? Yes. This is our high fantasy, over the top, very big, bold um, arena brawler game, where essentially you're playing as a wizard, and you're jumping in with the arena, you're picking three champions completely of your own choosing and the idea is that you'll mash them together into a team grab all their decks of cards jump into the arena and try and take down the other player and the gameplay is super simple it's just three actions on your turn you're playing lots of these gorgeous cards we've got a bunch of prototype art cards right here get in there michael you love it and the idea is that each one of the champions comes with six cards unique to them and whenever you play with three champions you take six six and six you've got an 18 card deck that's you ready to go there's no deck building you're just mashing together the champions you like or you are work mechanically well for you jump into the arena 1v1 or you can go 2v2 as well now we put the multiplayer mode on there we did a tabletopia digital version and we did a print and play version so if you want to try before you buy you can do that also and in addition to that for anyone who doesn't know mythic games they do awesome miniatures as well as awesome games so i see you have a lot here to show showing off the yeah. minis I mean, the, the cool thing with this, right, you know, we're, we're looking at a bunch of different stuff. So we've got Troll Ravagers, you know, we've got Kilgore here, he's in his heavy armor. Mm -hmm. Or we've got your typical ones, like we've got Gwen, the High Elf Sorceress, or we've got Dugrin, who's our kind of Iron Dwarf tank, you know? Because the idea is Super Fantasy Brawl is embracing all of your typical fantasy tropes. So yeah. we've got Elves, we've got Phoenixes, we've got Gnomes riding Camilla Raptors, and these are our big statue pieces, right? So in the middle of the arena, we're going to have the three wizards that spawned, the, they basically started the brawl, and these represent Garnet, Esme, and also Ragrill. And they're kind of just, they're really decorative pieces, but we wanted to have a bit of fun with them. And we give these as free things to every single Kickstarter backer so their table could look really good. Wait, so every backer is going to get these? Every single backer is getting <laughs> everything you see here uh, on the board, plus another six champions for like 49 bucks is the, is the base pledge. If you want to go more than that, you want to do... Oh, Michael had it in his pocket there when I was looking at you, Kelly. He's a sneaky man. you got to watch those people behind the camera, right? So yeah, we did a $49 pledge and an $89 pledge for the people that like uh, neoprene and stuff like that as well. You get your kind of expanded pieces. Yeah. But the key thing about Super Fancy Brawl, and I really need to stress this, is that we were bowled over by the support. Like, we nearly had seven and a half thousand backers and the key thing is this is just the beginning for this game it's going to be our first retail product it's going to hit with backers at sort of the end of q1 start of q2 next year and immediately after that we're going to hit retail everything that was on the Kickstarter, all the gameplay all the champions will be hitting retail and we're going to have launch events we're going to have organized play events we're going to have new champions we're on 15 champions already but i can tell you right now i tell you guys at home that we already have over 22 champions developed and a bunch more in the pipeline so this is going to be the kind of game that if you want to keep getting into high fantasy and fun things there'll be more coming Awesome. What, what we really appreciate at Unfiltered Gamer is how much you guys focus on the, the community and building the community and taking care of your community, which is really great. The, to be honest, the, the backers of the community are absolutely awesome. Like They see things that we don't. Like We didn't realize, and this is so silly, in the Master Wizard pledge, we give you a, a board and we give you a neoprene mat, right? We also give you the, the, the punch board tokens and the plas plastic tokens. We also give, we give you basically duplicates of everything. And they're like, hey, you give us duplicates of everything, but you don't give us duplicates of the challenge cards, the cards that you're basically trying to achieve to score points in the arena any chance you could give us a second challenge deck so we can just run a second table with the neoprene and the, the board we were like yeah like if, why wouldn't we like of course like we give you duplicates of everything else we just didn't realize we didn't think about it at the time that that was all that was missing so we added a second challenge deck in just automatically and just said yeah we'll do it and that was only came from the community getting involved at playing it and playtesting and realizing this and, and suggesting it so like we're we give to them they give to us it's a, it's a two-way street awesome so that was super fantasy brawl what do you have over here right. So now it's time to kind of delve into, uh, into yeah, I'll toss that over there. We're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to put it on camera for a second. I'm going to break the immersion, right? Because we're going to get in, we're going to get intimate, we're going to get down close. So Time of Legends Destinies, 
and Time Malaysian's Joan of Arc. These are two things that you're going to hear a lot about over the next year or so. We did Time Malaysian's Joan of Arc. That was back in 2017. So from October to November 2017. That was the big Kickstarter that really made Mythic Games kind of what it is today, right? So that was over 970 minis. It was the massive dragon. It was the devil. It was everything. The expansive yeah. world of like 50 different scenarios that you're going to delve into, right? You built a whole universe. It, it, and that you nailed it, right? Because what we're doing is in a couple of months' time, we're going back to Kickstarter and we're bringing that whole entire campaign back again. But now what we're doing is we're heading into Eastern Europe and we're going to be looking at the Teutonic Knights. We're going to be looking at not just kind of Christian beliefs, but we're also going to be looking at the likes of um, the paganistic belief system, their gods, their kind of um, mythical creatures, and all the kind of Russian and Baltic region, Lithuanian, Polish troops. So we're going to push it up to over 1,100 minis in the all-in. We're going to make it even bigger. We've got some big battles that were set during that period that we're going to embrace, and we have huge plans for that, right? And that's what we've got coming up in a couple of months. But you nailed it when you said we built a universe, right? Because at the start of this year, Lucky Duck Games Games got in touch with us and they said, hey guys, what would you say if we thought about taking Time of Legends, Joan of Arc, taking all that world, and instead of just having it being big battles and big scenes, we bring it down to like a micro level. We go right into the towns, right into the stories, right into the narrative, and we take that whole world and setting and universe, and we develop it into a new game that uses a similar system to Chronicles of Crime and uses an app-driven narrative competitive game. Now don't get freaked out by that, I'll explain yeah. it to you in a little bit. Because some so, people go, wait, what? How can a narrative... So it's not a yeah. crime solver like the right. other Chronicles of Crime. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so let's have a chat about it, right? So just to make sure everyone knows, I'll grab the box for a second. So this is a quick prototype of what the box will look like. So it's Time of Legends Destinies. It is a Lucky Duck Games production. They're producing it and developing it. We're simply helping them. The box will be completely standalone. If you back their Kickstarter, which they're hoping to do in September, you don't need anything from Time of Legends Joan of Arc. Time of Legends Destinies will be a standalone piece, but we're letting them use our minis, we're giving them our art and our sculpts, and we're, as part of that kind of partnership with us, we're helping them bring that to life, right? So what we've got here is a typical kind of scenario. You choose a scenario when you start to play, and this one is about the werewolf of Santilli. And the idea is that you're not playing instead as the werewolf or as Sir Jehan the knight who's coming to save the town. Instead, you're playing as some common civilians and people who are kind of actually kind of taking it upon themselves to try and achieve their own epic destinies and actually deal with this themselves. So they're almost trying to write their own annals in history. They're trying to create their own stories. So for example, I don't want to give too many spoilers away because there is a lot of intriguing things you can yeah. find but at the start of the game, you'll, once you pick your scenario, you'll pick your character. So the deserter here has a little bit of backstory, tells you a bit secretly as the player a bit of your backstory, and it also tells you a little bit about their goals. And he has two different what we call paths to destiny. And I'll, I won't show too much, but essentially the idea is that as a deserter, he knows a little bit more than the average person about the Holy Order Knight Sir Jehan, and he thinks that he might not be all he's cracked up to be. So the deserter player is going to be spending their time either building a bit of a case, trying to find evidence that proves his belief, or potentially going on a bit of a vigilante one-man mission, equipping himself to try and take down Sir Jehan himself. So what I'll do, because I don't want to kind of keep you guys going yeah. too long, is I'll show you a little bit how the gameplay works, how right? The app works? Yeah, okay. so we've got the app and we've got these beautiful player boards. So right now we're on day three of this story and we've got the Herbalist. We can obviously zoom in and zoom out and have a look around the map in the digital and the physical world. If we zoom in to where the Herbalist currently is right now, I'm actually right by the inn, right? So I'm going to jump into the inn, spend my action going in here, and I'm going to get a bit of story. Now, I'll summarize it quickly. So essentially, it's saying that the inn is empty and it's not normal. Something really seems off with the people. Everyone's quiet. And the inn's keeper kind of calls you over when you get in and he's saying, hey, there's a Romani trader going about called Patrin. If you see him, tell him he owes me four gold, all right? And we're presented with four different options here. So we can actually give back the four gold to the innkeeper, win a bit of favor with, with the innkeeper if we wanted, and maybe go and find Patrin ourselves. But we actually don't have four gold on our player board right now. So we've got a couple of other options. We could listen to some gossip, we could buy from buy some provisions, or we could ask the innkeeper about something. Let's ask the innkeeper about something. I'm gonna look, you're gonna see this, we're gonna break the break the third wall here, a fourth wall. Where are you, Michael? Oh, he's down, he's too low. He's still there he is. <laughs> So what we can do at this point is we can take any of our cards, right? We can take our, our blood hard, we can take our herbs, we can actually take our own destiny, and we can ask the innkeeper about these things. So for example, if I grab the destiny, 
and show it to the screen. He's, so this is contextually asking the innkeeper about ourselves and he has to say, haven't you heard what I told you about the money? I don't need to engage in other people's problems until I solve my own. Maybe the blacksmith will help you. He's always willing to get into trouble. All right, so we so it know. Was like, it was a dead end, but also a clue as to where you could go next. Who might be able to help if, us, If right? you want to discover more about yourself. It, exactly. Okay. So he's, if we helped him, though, if we gave him the gold or if we went and did to him this favor, maybe he might work with us a little more cooperatively, right? Um, I'll do another couple of options here. We've got buy provisions for one gold. So I could spend the gold and it would come up and say, hey, you buy a loaf of bread or fish and a lump of cheese and it tells me to go get a travel ration. Now, if you're familiar with Chronicles of Crime, they had lots of cards that were kind of kind of generic so they could fill lots of purposes. Yeah. What we've got is just a sample prototype of check this out. Loads and loads and loads of different cards and items that are creepy, that are related to quests or equipment that you can buy, that you can find. And these all share lots of different things. At so first, they share, let's have a look at the silver chalice. They have a QR code here. They also have an always ability, which gives you a passive effect. And they have a stat at the bottom here. It's seven wisdom and a value if you decided that you just wanted to sell it at some point. But let's talk about this so wisdom for a second. Stand. You nailed it. Okay. You're absolutely. So if I did have the chalice, what I would basically do is put another pip onto my board in that seven wisdom <laughs> slot, and I'll show you exactly how that works, right? So I'll take this away. I'll put us back to where we were. We've got here, listen to latest gossip. And this tells you that this is basically a wisdom or kind of an awareness test. We have typical stats in the game that are kind of like simplistic role-playing stats, right? So you have your physical stamina. You basically have your representation, that you, you know, your physical body. You've got your dexterity or your agility. And then you've got your wisdom or your kind of intelligence, your negotiation above that. So these are your three different stat tracks. Whenever you complete a test, you take your two basic, these are still prototype, of course, but your, your basic kind of destiny dice, and you roll them and you're gonna compare to the track. So for example, if I was doing this wisdom test, I got five. So I'd look up the track, I would hit one success here, and then I wouldn't go any further. If I'd got six, I would've got two successes. So this, our ability to kind of uh, roll the dice against our successes by having items. So a good example is this Bloodhound. He comes with a four physical and a nine dexterity, right? So we also oh, a six, de sorry, six physical and a nine dexterity. So we can see we actually have these extra pips right here on six and nine, thanks to having that Bloodhound. If we were to lose that Bloodhound, we would lose those stats. So we have to make decisions about that. So you get one success yep, over pop it here. in there, pop All one, right. hit okay. We should probably get a little information with the one. Okay, we get a little. So I heard that our huntsman who lives south West from until he is sick. Now when the wolves are on the hunt, he should be working all day. Someone should help him. Okay. So that's interesting because as you get more skills, you get better at getting information through the game. And what's really cool, if you have uh, uh, horrible things happen, like if you have issues, like if, if someone kind of attacks you or physically, you can have these stats become worse by basically being moved up the track into harder positions. So we have lots of nice ways to represent fatigue and kind of uh, negative effects. One thing I'm just gonna, before we kind of wrap up, I wanna show you a last little bit of the deserter here. If you wanna flip over a new tile, all we have to do is basically tell the app, yep, we're gonna flip this over, head over to, to a new area, and it'll tell us then what different hot points are in that area. These, these kind of points of interest are in their area. So I can flip over the tiles like this, and we'll They're add all these. numbered, okay. That's it. Now the idea is that these are still um, just prototyping. They will be larger tiles. You'll have slightly larger boards than this. They'll be about 50% bigger tiles and thicker. And you'll have all these kind of points of interest that you can add on. Um, I'm gonna just go to the den. We'll have a bit of fun here. So if we head to the den, right, what we've got here is we've got a rocky crack hidden in the thicket home to a wolf pack. From your vantage point, you can count at least five beasts present. Direct attack is possible, but seems foolish. So we can attack the pack and use a double test for that or run away if we really wanted to, or we could throw something into the den from a distance. If you check out the items that we have on the deserters board there, Michael, you'll see we have a few different items that you could choose from. Why don't, Michael, why don't you tell us, you wanna look at the moon tarot card, the lantern or the distilled poison what would you like to throw into the den? It's the poison, okay. So let's try to throw something in. Let's show the app that we've decided we want to commit the poison card. Okay, so it says the wolves feast on the poisoned food and soon almost after half the pack is sick or dead, gain one experience and discard the scanned item. So you've given up this kind of always passive ability that you had, but you've had an experience gained by using something wisely and you've also weakened the pack. So now we're down to two beasts that are weakened and we're gonna have an easier time taking them down. So that's the essence of the game. You'll be moving around day to day, exploring, working towards whatever your goal is. So we mentioned obviously 
proving that Sir Jehan is evil or maybe taking him down ourselves. The herbalist is more into actually reversing the werewolf curse or maybe kind of trying to bring the people together. We have other characters that have completely different objectives too. But the idea is they're all intertwined together. So, for example, if I was trying to equip myself and you found a really attractive sword or if I was trying to run someone out of town and you befriended them, our, what we do around is going to change the board and it's also going to affect... It affects other we, players. It, but wow. not directly, uh -huh. right? We're just It's just through our decisions in the story. However, as I mentioned earlier, coming back to it now, this is competitive. And what's going to happen once you think, kind of like Kuludu, this is the way I kind of easily describe it. Once you think you know the three, the location, the person, and the weapon, once you think you're ready, you're prepared, you're equipped, or you have the ritual goods and you're ready to go, what you're basically going to do is you're going to start your epic destiny finale. And that will be the point where you say, okay, I'm now going to try and prove my case, or I'm going to commit to this fight or this ritual. And your following turns will be spent not exploring and gathering, but basically proving and committing to this final destiny. The other players, meanwhile, will still be out exploring, still trying to complete theirs as well. And it will essentially become a race because only one player and one character will be the one to save the town, to do the righteous, holy deed and win, win the day and have their destiny fulfilled. And at the end of it, after about two, two and a half hours playtime they're aiming for, that's what they'd like it to be, you'll have one person coming out as the person who is the new Joan of Arc, the new member, the new <laughs> hero of all of Time of Legends. Wow, there is so much in here. That you can There's tell, a whole load more I haven't even started to tell you, but I don't want to bend your ear too long. We have a whole no, virtue system, great. a whole light and evil thing. There's hidden stats in here. Wow. You'll be presented with contextual options that sometimes you'll see, sometimes you won't, depending on your oh. items, who you've spoken to, whether you're good, whether you're evil. There's just a world of stuff. Some of the tiles go from being very simple. points, we don't know what that is. Oh, I can tell you, I can tell you yeah. a couple of things. I'll tell you one very, very quickly if you're yeah. into leveling up. If you look at the top of the board there, you'll see that we have this one star, two stars, three stars or four stars, and the idea is you spend experience and if I spent two experience it would let me basically put a pip into any of these areas so I'm essentially leveling up my ability to be successful so okay. not just items will affect your stats but also doing good things and getting experience will let you empower items or gain your stats and improve them wow just so many possibilities with this thank you so much for sharing you're with so welcome us. it's great to see all you. right if people want to know more about mythic games where should they go so mythic games on facebook is a great place to be or mythicgamesnet slash newsletter that way we can give you guys everything that's happening because essentially what we've got is a an open late pledge an upcoming kickstarter mm -hmm. and the, the lucky duck games guys will be launching their kickstarter in september as well and we'll be supporting them that'll be done through those guys so a lot happening facebook is a great place to see us our discord channel or over on our website via our newsletter all are good awesome well thank you so much for sharing uh this is callie with unfiltered gamer here at gen con and as always we look forward to See you guys next time. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Gen Con. I'm Callie, and I'm here with Bruce from North Star Games. Hi, Bruce. Hey, Callie. I was also going to say I was Callie, and it was going to get real hard because I was going to try and take your job and see if you could just tell people about games, and we would just switch. Uh... I don't know if I'm qualified to do that, but I like that, you know, we're copying each other with the pink hair. Indeed. Having fun with that. Absolutely, absolutely. I would also be a very bad Callie. Oh, so it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're qualified for the other role. Uh -huh. we, we just might try them, though. All right, awesome. So what are you guys... <laughs> What are you guys super excited to share about? I know you have tons of games, but what are you? What's new and exciting that you're super excited to share at Gen Con this year? Okay, so uh, basically, <laughs> go back to the Origins video. Yeah, watch that. A lot of not that, not that. <laughs> go back to the Origins video. The stuff we talked about there, a lot of that still applies. I'm going to yeah. talk to you about the brand new things we have. Woo! Oh my goodness, the Herb Witches! Me, 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 me. The uh, hype for this game is real. Oh, it is very real, and we did not get enough of them in. And I just want to take a minute, if you're watching, uh, however many of you there are. Uh, anytime a company does, like, the daily allocation, where they're like, oh, we only have 25, that's not a marketing move. That's because enough games didn't come in, and we're just trying to do what we can to get them into as many different hands as possible. And that is what happened with the Herb Witches. Uh, we wish a lot more had come in, but you know what? People are super excited about it, and that feels really good to have a game that people love. So let me tell you why they care. It's the expansion of the award-winning Quacks of Quidlinburg. It gives you a new player. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness, what happened? You can play with another player. I'm gonna put that on the table. Go down there now. Uh, there's another thing. There are overflow bowls. The overflow bowl goes to the side of the spoon, because people say to me, Bruce, and they say, I assume they all know my name, Bruce, Every time we play, we go off the edge of the spoon, to which first I say, you're a liar. But then I say, hey, we've taken care of it. There's the overflow bowl now. 
Once you go past 35, you're going to be able to keep putting chips in there. You can't go over, but you can keep putting chips in there. Whenever you stop, you're going to get the value of the chips in there divided by two in extra points. So it's a way to take care of that going off the edge. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. We also have books. Hey, look, there's so many books. Here, take a book. Hey, look, there's a book. Hey, do you want a book? Look, there's another book for you. I like purple books. I also like purple books. Hey, um, <laughs> there's a, hey, look, there's another book for you. Take that book. Uh, oh, my goodness. Here's another book. Oh, look, there it is. Uh, yeah. So there's a whole bunch of new books. There's an entirely new uh, five and six book set. Okay. There is also, if you remember the black, uh, the Death's Head Hawk Moth, in the other game, uh, in the base game, only had one power. There are now two new, completely different powers for the Death's Head Hawk Moth. Beyond that, there are, and I don't know your uh, your rating. I don't know how blue you work. Uh, you can edit this later. Uh, but we have big ass pumpkins now. You know, I have a six pumpkin. It's so gourd. It's so gourd. Uh, we also have a new element to the game called Loco Weed. Loco Weed kind of looks like a holly berry, not holly berry, a holly berry. I've done that joke a couple times, so if you've seen it somewhere else, that one of them was the first time I did the joke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the deal is, is it has no value, and it picks up its value from the power that it has. So for one side, it is your number of rat tails plus one to a maximum of four. The other side, it's a joker. It is the last element that was drawn, so the last colored tile. So that's super, super cool. Uh, and then you might be thinking to yourself, hey, Bruce, there can't be any more to this expansion. There can't be any more. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thanks for filling that in for me. I certainly hope out there, it, you feel like Everyone you have the everyman. Yeah. Uh, but it's called the herb witches because there are witches. Well, at the, yeah, you, you gotta have herb You witches. gotta have witches or the box is a lie. Uh, there, you're gonna get three witch pennies, a gold, a silver, and a copper. And there are witches. In this case, this is the silver witch. There are four copies. There are four different powers. You shuffle them at the beginning and you put out a silver witch, a copper witch, and a gold witch. They each have a penny, and each of the witches can break the game in a different way. For instance, hey, did, you, did your pot explode? Give me your silver penny, and now you still get all of the benefits. Hey, remember how you weren't allowed to use your flask if you blew up? Thank you, I appreciate you. <laughs> the knowledgeable nod is exactly what I was looking for. Uh, give me your silver penny, and now you are allowed to use your flask. Hey, do you want just a six chip mulligan? I can give you one of those, didn't like the first six chips. Hey, if you remember how the potion works, you use the potion, you can throw the last white back into your bag. Now you can throw the last two whites back in your bag. I know, <laughs> I know, it's it's game changing. So, and so that you could do, uh, there's a lot of replayability with all the different combinations of witches. Absolutely, there's a ton of replayability. Okay. Yeah. The other thing to note is the uh, witch pennies at the end of the game are worth one point apiece. So we have very much told you that you should use those witch pennies when you can. We also have the gold penny. This gives you a bonus at the end of the round. You can buy things for one ruby instead of two. This one gives you a bonus for the different colors in your pot. This one gives you rubies based on the number of points you were going to get. And this one, the cardinal rule of the Quacks at Quidlinburg is you're never allowed to look in your bag. For this, you are allowed to dump your bag out, root through it, and see how many of these different chips you have so that you get points for it. So the witches do all kinds of cool stuff, and they are in here as well. And then once again, there's four of each color witch uh, for the gold, the silver, and the copper. So just a bunch of different ways to play the game. All in this box. Uh, it's going to be $34.99. It will be at your local store in mid to late September. If you know somebody that got it at Gen Con, uh, tell them that you appreciate their service uh, because they probably took a battle wound to do it. Awesome. That's so much stuff in this expansion. There's a wow. Ton of stuff in here. <laughs> okay, but I'm super curious about what's in this giant black box. I appreciate you holding that for me. I didn't think about it when I pulled it over. I, I genuinely appreciate it. So this... Dun, dun, dun. This is Paint the Roses. Okay. Let me drop the box down here. Paint the Roses is the game we're going to be coming out with in 2020. I it, feel like we're getting like a secret sneak peek of it. You didn't see that box, did you? Of course you're getting a secret sneak peek of it. So this game will be coming out in 2020. It's going to be on Kickstarter then. It'll be coming out later in the year. It is an Alice in Wonderland themed group deduction game. Okay. What a lot of people are calling it is like cryptid, but cooperative. So you are, you work for the Queen of Hearts. You are gardeners for the Queen of Hearts. If you know anything about the Queen of Hearts, you know she doesn't sincerely care about a garden. She cares about cutting off your head. <laughs> so what she has said is this, you're going to work on my garden. I'm going to tell you how I want my garden made, but if you tell anyone, I'll cut off your head. 
So each person in the game has one rule of how the Queen of Hearts wants her garden made. And there she is with her axe. You are these sad little card gardeners. Cardeners, as I have called them, but I don't know if that'll stick. How the game works basically is this. You have a set of rules. These say color to color or shape to shape, color to color, or color to color, shape to shape, or shape to color. Here's what you need to know. Her garden consists of four colors. Pink, red, purple, and yellow. And four shapes. Hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. Makes sense. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out four to start the board. You start the board with these four. So, and it's, it, in some games, in the, in the base game, or the, the basic version of the game, is gonna set you with four specific tiles. In this case, we're just gonna draw four randos and start there. On your turn, you will take one of the four plants that is in the greenhouse down here, and you will try to use it to convey your rule to the team. One person on the team is allowed to have color to color. So we're gonna say there, that color is pink to red. So what I'm gonna do is one thing, this is the first time this has happened to me, I'm gonna put a pink chip out there. I'm actually gonna cheat okay. and throw one of these out there. So, so you can show, demonstrate. Exactly, so I can demonstrate how this is gonna work. So on your turn, you might take one of these and put it there. You then have cubes that you're gonna use, and I can put a number of cubes on here for the number of tiles touching this tile that satisfy my rule. So I'm gonna put one cube. You know that my card is color to color. So you say that must be red to pink, and you would be right. Every round, one person, or every turn, one person must put a new tile on the board, and then we must all choose one person's rule that we're going to answer. If we answer it correctly, the card gardeners are going to move up the number of points on the card, so in this case, one point. Uh, these are all one point. The middle are twos and threes. These are fours and fives. Okay. So it's kind of the rules are kind of changing as you go. The rules are constantly changing okay. because if you figured out a rule, yeah. the Queen of Hearts gets angry and she's going to change her mind to make it as hard on you as possible. <laughs> uh, if you get it wrong, she's going to move closer to you to try to kill you. If you get through one of these thresholds, she gets angry that you're working it all out. So you add another stack to her base, and now her movement is going to go up. She's enraged. She's enraged, and she starts moving faster and faster every time you get another part of the goal. You lose with the Queen of Hearts. If she gets to you, she cuts off your head. If you can build her entire garden, and she gets one last movement turn to get you and doesn't get you, you've won the game. Woo. If you're doing really well, there's actually a little book where you can celebrate your successes, and it has a leaderboard. So if you're far ahead of the queen, what you can do is, is try to make some crazy guesses so that you are able to get as far as possible in the game and beat the high score. Uh, once again, this will be coming out. This will be coming to Kickstarter in 2020. It will be available later after. And we've heard there might be a super deluxe version that's going to have like the thick like Bakelite plastic tiles and possibly a 3D queen. I don't know, but they're talking about maybe a super deluxe version and a regular version of this game coming to Kickstarter uh, sometime in 2020 and then hopefully also coming out to the public later in 2020. And this is Paint the Roses. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. I, I love this. Love the Alice theme. It's, it's oh. so exciting and fun. And uh, yeah, I don't want to uh, have to paint the roses red. <laughs> I understand. I understand. We hope that a lot of people uh, love this and get into it. Uh, the, the designer that made it, Ben Goldman, is just a huge fan of Alice in Wonderland and has worked really hard to make sure that even though this is a kind of a cooperative deduction, you can see the colors and the hearts, diamond clubs and spades. Yeah. This feels, uh, this, it looks like it's just math, but it doesn't work that way. When you actually get the emotional feel of it, if you're doing poorly, she's going to kill you very quickly. Yeah. If, she's, if you're doing well, she's going to chase you around the board as fast as she can for about a half an hour. And it's just fantastic. It's so thematic. It's so cool. The art's cool. And we're just really excited to see this hit Kickstarter next year. Woo. And if people want to follow along, get involved in the Kickstarter, where should they go to sign up? So all kinds of places. Come to NorthStarGames.com, sign up for our uh, for our newsletter. We'd be glad to tell you there. Come to all of our social media. All of our social media I'm will be down here somewhere <laughs> at North Star Games, just like anywhere you social media. That would be a good place to do it. You can also follow Paint the Roses on Facebook, uh, facebook.com, I believe, slash Paint the Roses, if you specifically want to follow this. But we'd love to show you all of our great games at NorthStarGames.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Bruce. I hope you have an awesome con. Is there any last words you want to say? Uh, hey, I'm so happy that this didn't break this time and we didn't have to do a Star Trek thing. That's awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to see me at Gen Con. I really appreciate it. Have a great show. All of you out there, whatever you're doing at your computer or on yep, your couch yep. or your phone. Maybe, or... maybe you know what to say now. Do it. As always, we look forward to I don't seeing, know what... seeing you guys next time.
Apparently that's yeah. the, that's a thing. That is a catchphrase. <laughs> that we say every time we that end we our say show. every time. But I don't remember. I you do a lot of these. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Gen Con. I'm Callie and I'm here today with John Rott from Gatekeeper Games. Hi John. Hi Callie. <laughs> So super excited to see the panel you put together earlier with uh, the Kickstarter panel with just so many different experts from the beginning of the process to the end of the process and yeah, so many cool. questions that people people were asking these questions about Kickstarter game. Yeah. How'd it go? Uh, it went really well. Um, I want to thank Michael, uh, who's holding the camera right now, for uh, taking care of uh, us by being one of our panelists, being one of our uh, media specialists or reviewing specialists. Um, my company is formed entirely based on the love and goodwill of Kickstarter backers. Um, so I know there are so many people that are interested in doing what the rest of us have done and kickstarting yeah. a company and, and building learning up with from them. you. Yeah, <laughs> that's my hope is to be able to pay it forward. So we do these advice panels here at the show. We have the blog on our um, on our website just to be able to pay forward what we've learned from our successes and from our mistakes. And um, so thank you for and, participating. And the success shows because uh, people are coming by here, super busy booth, super nice booth. I love all these these uh, display cases. It's super thank fun. You. Yeah, super swanky wood stuff. Our, our table is uh, rage flip proof, which is cool. All right, so what are people uh, super excited about here at Gen Con? So um, at Gen Con, people really know us for our Havsies Dice line. Uh, most people call me the Havsies Dice guy. They don't even know my company name, Gatekeeper Games. Oh, you're the Havsies Dice guy, right? And the answer is yes. Um, I invented layer dice, all layer dice on the planet. I invented the uh, the methodology and the concept, which is super exciting. Um, so um, so Havsies Dice are effectively two layers. It's a it's a top half and a bottom half. Okay. Um, but what that layering process does, it uh, now uh, it enables us to have quality control over the literal center of the die, so that there is exactly zero air bubbles inside of our die. And instead of acrylic, we use a high density resin. Um, and what that means is you end up with a heavier, denser, better balanced die than you'll find anywhere else in the world. Yeah. All right. And they look cool because you got the two different colors going yeah. on, and, and the they're, freaking pretty. they're quality. And little random numbers, <laughs> which is kind of important to the whole process. So what we've done new at the show is we've taken those same designs. Um, and we've blown out the centers on them so that they're now transparent through the center. Um, so in case you've ever had any doubts about my bubble free claim, yes. <laughs> you can, you can see the look. proof. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. And then beyond that. Um, but you can still see all the numbers. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah great. it's super cool. You can see the numbers from the other side. It's so freaking <laughs> cool. So then when you take those um, colors and you blow out the center, what we did is we went and we harnessed them. Do the opposite. Yeah. So now we have just the transparent uh, top and bottom with the band of color in the middle. We call them neutrons, uh, neutron <laughs> dice, because when a Havsies die, half life ends and it explodes in a polyclysmic blast. Okay. Okay. It's it's a supernova. So you and have what's a whole, left after a supernova, a whole universe for the Havsies dice. Exactly. <laughs> and what's left, of course, is a neutron, a neutron star, a neutron die. But depending on how you hold it, like here, check it out, right? So yeah. it's like, there's three layers, just yeah. kidding, it's two so, layers, it's three layers. I saw it like this, I'm like, oh, it just looks like a normal die. Isn't but, that trippy yeah. cool? So, uh, Michael, you have to get some uh, some close-up on that one to see how that looks, because it's super cool. So, um, and then, uh, kicking right. it one step even further, we have... Um, Wait, what? Three yeah. color... We have uh, five layers, five layer, but it's only three colors. Yeah. So it goes like A, B, C, B, A in the color scheme. Okay, okay. We call those reality shards. We branded those D20s on those with our uh, tower logo um, because that's awesome. Awesome. Like Thank you for sharing. I love the like kind of water or cool theme you got going on in this area. So and then, you, But you got all colors going on everywhere. Yeah, we try to... Uh, I, I like doing cool things, and I like I authentically like doing things that other people haven't done. Yeah. So we have um, we have brown dice because when you're brown with green, it's a perfect uh, color combination for your druid or for your ranger. All of a sudden, brown's pretty when it's paired with the right color. Yeah. Um, things of that sort. So, um, but enough about me. How about you? How's your How's your show? It's great. Thanks for sharing. Thank you for having Michael on the panel. It was super exciting to hear, and uh, we're just excited to be here sharing 
sharing all the things that are going on at Gen Con. Well, not all the things. Well, some of the things because <laughs> no one can all do of all the of things. things. No, it's super fun. <laughs> it's super fun to try though. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, just excited to be here. So, if people want to know more about Have These Dice or Gatekeeper Games, where should they go? How should they get in contact? What should they do? Uh, we're available on all the things. So we have our website. And that's www.gatekeepergaming.com. We're Gatekeeper Games, but it's gatekeepergaming.com. Uh, we're on Twitter. <coughs> this is my voice. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the things. Yeah. Awesome. So. Well, anything, any last words for the camera? Um, uh, I don't know you, but I love you. Uh, well, it, I really it, do. It, like, I really it do. actually like, shows that you love your community. I think that was one of the themes that came out in the Kickstarter panel, just the focus on the community. That's what, that's yeah. what we do. Yeah. All right. This is Callie from Unfiltered Gamer. Thank you, guys. And as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. <laughs>